under it. And so it makes sense to me that you'd have almost two weeks to to really sit with the mystery of Christmas and its meaning because it has significance for all aspects of our lives. And so I I appreciate that we have this time set apart. And then not only that, but we also have the four weeks of Advent leading up to it. Traditionally, they were not meant to be preparation for Christmas, but there's a way in which I think it's a good, it is a good preparation, a time of, of forward looking, anticipating the second coming of Christ, a time of repentance, a time of, of acknowledging the darkness as we await the light. And then we, we say, you know what, God has come to us in Christ and he will in fact come again. Uh, in the time of, of God's own choosing. I think we need time to, to hold on to that, especially, especially in these parts of the world where we're so glutted with like commercialism and sales and shopping and all that kind of stuff. It can actually be really countercultural to say, we're going to observe celebrating Christmas from December 25th to Epiphany. Mm -hmm. That will be our time of celebration. Mm -hmm. That's, that goes against the grain of a lot in our society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you mind, uh, and this was not on our list of questions, so hopefully we can wander off just a little, but I'm curious, like, let's just think January 3rd or January 4th, um, how would that look distinctly Christmassy in your, like, would you still be doing Christmas carols in your church? Like, for many, most of our churches would not be from Anglican, most of my students, I'm sorry, are not yeah. Anglicans or Episcopalians, so would you still be singing Christmas carols at that point? I'm wondering, yeah. what, is there, are there things your family does that sort of push Christmas later and later? Tell me about, like, what it yeah. looks like to observe 12 days. Yeah, so just thinking about at home first, we don't put up our tree until later in Advent, mm -hmm. usually like the week before Christmas. Mm -hmm. Um and then we leave it up. We leave it up through Epiphany. Mm -hmm. And then we are continuing to like eat the food that we love and bake cookies. And we have a, a bin of Christmas movies and Christmas books that we get out okay. uh, for Christmas. Okay. And they're only out for those two weeks. Uh -huh. And so it's like, oh, we're off school. I'm off school. Let's <laughs> read these books together. Let's watch these movies. Let's mm -hmm. make our hot chocolate and, mm -hmm. you know, do those kinds of things, not just leading up to Christmas, but actually intentionally within those two weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you still singing Christmas carols? Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have our Christmas Spotify playlist that we keep going. Uh, and then at church, we continue to sing Christmas carols and we're, we're preaching on texts uh, that are related to, to the first coming of Christ. Um, yeah. Again, slightly off here, but since you referenced Advent before, yeah. again, for many of my students who wouldn't have grown up with a more Advent-centered, or if they think about Advent, it's only kind of pre-Christmas. Mm -hmm. So how is that different than what you're doing December 19th at church, for instance? Right, yeah. So this is where, again, the history is really intriguing. Advent was originally observed as, an, as four weeks of expectation of the return of Christ. And so the themes associated with Advent are like the diametrically opposed right. to Christmas. It's themes like judgment and heaven and hell and death and these kinds of things. It's the realization that, that Christians live in this in-between. The kingdom has come, but is not already you know, yep. fully here. And so we're awaiting the return of Christ. So the, the season of Advent is focused on waiting, waiting with hope. And that means as much as possible if you're trying to observe it, that you're not doing celebratory things. You mm -hmm. are singing more mournful songs. You mm -hmm. are reminding yourself of the brokenness of the world and lamenting that together. Um, you're singing songs about hope and waiting and expectation mm -hmm. so that then when the feast of Christmas arrives, you are truly celebrating in a way that's distinct from this period of waiting in Advent. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm sure that uh, folks who honor Advent in that way, there must be a spectrum of how much do you follow along as our culture is celebrating Christmas already yeah. in December. So there must be a whole spectrum of a uh, sense of like, is it good for us to, is it good for us to go to a Christmas party on December 11th if we have a Christmas party, <laughs> that kind of thing. So are you more the type who like is, is comfortable kind of accommodating cultural Christmas yeah. during Advent, even while sort of saying, in my church life, we want to keep focused Advent. Is that, is yeah, that I mean, no one wants to be an Advent Grinch, you know, right, like right. at least, at least I don't, I have friends mm -hmm. who are really particular 
my son is a purist. He's 14 and he's like, absolutely not. We're not listening to any Christmas music until yeah. December 25th. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, right. it's not, I don't know. I don't think it's <laughs> worth being grinchy about it. <laughs> right, right. right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. But uh, back to Christmas. I just, I thought since we were talking Advent a little, it just would help to flesh it yeah, out. Yeah, absolutely. Talk to me. One of the things I, I did not realize uh, when reading this was you talked about how the church traditionally held four masses at Christmas. So one right. during the day on Christmas Eve and then three more between sundown Christmas Eve through Christmas Day morning. So presumably like sundown Christmas Eve, midnight or something, yeah. and then yeah. early Christmas morning. Uh, I was trying to think through what it would take for me to get my kids <laughs> to go to church four times between Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Um, just like... The other thing I was thinking was, you know, a lot of churches last year, because church Christmas fell on a Sunday, mm -hmm. many non-denominational churches, and some even in our denomination, uh, decided not to have church Christmas morning as a way, right. like, not to have services Christmas morning. And I'm assuming that you would have gone ahead and had church Christmas morning. We did, like, that yes. That would be a central part. So why do you think it's so important that, that churches worship yeah. at Christmas? Like, instead of sort of saying, no, don't, you know, if, if it's a day when people are with their families, go ahead and cancel church. Like, why, why would you right. not want to be that person? Well, yeah, I, so I'm not definitely not suggesting we do the four services thing, right? right. I, yeah. I couldn't make that happen either. Right. Um, <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> but there's something important about gathering as Christians to, to worship, to pray, to tell one another the story of God's arrival amongst us. And, mm -hmm. and that, that is a public story. It's something we share. Mm -hmm. And so this idea that Christmas would be wholly observed at home you know, with your with your family, um, I, it just makes me uncomfortable. It's very individualistic, and that's not to say there's not room for, again for grace. Sure. You know, you've got sick kids or whatever right. the case may be. Stuff yep. happens. Yep. But I, you know, folks who say keep Christ in Christmas, yes, and mm -hmm. I would also say keep math in Christmas. <laughs> let's, it's good. Yeah. Let's continue to gather for worship, mm -hmm. even if it's just a few of us. Mm -hmm. um, last year we did have Christmas services on Sunday um, and it was a small group and we didn't have a musician and we just mm -hmm. sang a few Christmas carols. Mm -hmm. We had a sermon that was, it was read. So my mm -hmm. husband read the Christmas day sermon from John Christmas. And I think oh, it was okay. not a bunch of frills, mm -hmm. but it was a beautiful, humble time to mm -hmm. mark that, you know, moment together and say, no, we really do believe God has come amongst us. And, and the spirit is here even in this small, humble way. Mm -hmm. And I, I just think that's good. Yeah. yeah. I was glad our church kept services going on, too, even though we don't have quite the theological grounding in, in the same way an Anglican yeah. might. But I do think, you know, thinking back to our discussion a few minutes ago, I mean, part, part of what's been marketed to us about what Christmas is really revolves around home in a way that is not, I don't know, I mean, the gospel sort of relativizes our family in many ways and sort of says we're part of a bigger a bigger family that, that right. makes her. Yeah. So it, it is a chance to kind of witness to that, even if it's just a few. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also enjoyed our Christmas service last year at our church, too. But it was smaller than uh, than some. But yeah. Yeah. And it's extra work. There's no doubt about that. And I have so much love and appreciation for those with littles trying to get them to, to <laughs> church. Um, but it, I think it matters. It sets patterns in our lives that are important. Yeah, I, I did breathe a sigh of relief when I realized this was the last Christmas on Sunday with kids. You know, like the next time Christmas is on a Sunday, my kids will be old enough that they all get it and it yeah. won't be dragging anybody out the door. They'll all be wanting to sleep in instead of get up early anyway. So <laughs> That's a little easier. That's right. That's right. Um, I would like to think just a little bit about um, poverty. So you, you talk in this book um, a, a lot about Jesus coming to be a poor person among poor people. Mm -hmm. And um, which, again, is, I, I will confess a love-hate relationship to Christians thinking about this at Christmas. Like sometimes, as you know, evangelical Christians can sort of be a scold about this and be like, how could you be celebrating when there is poverty? Right. Um, and yet, right, this idea of like, whenever we celebrate, we do so with eyes that are open to the reality uh, mm -hmm. of the world, right? Like we if it's important for us to pretend there's no poverty in order to celebrate, that's not really a good celebration. Right. So I'm just like, from your perspective, I mean, how do we appropriately keep our, you know, in a holiday that really is about feasting and celebration and joy, mm -hmm. how do we keep our duty to the poor 
kind of mm-hmm. front of mind without turning into a scold um, during this time of year. Yeah, gosh, that's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know that I've figured it out. I'll just be mm-hmm. honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one of the ways is that we probably don't need to be talking about this online or like performing our yeah. whatever it is that we're doing online. That's yep, that's right. Um, I think it's going to vary from you know person to person or maybe household to household, the best way to do this. Mm-hmm. But I think it really is possible to have special things or special times to celebrate while also making the kinds of sacrifices that are necessary to to give to those in need as mm-hmm. as part of our like Christian observance that God is with the poor and has special concern for their well-being. But we're not giving so that primarily we can have like good feelings, right? Mm-hmm. Or that that we can feel, like I said, get an Instagram photo, mm-hmm. you know, of us yeah. at the soup kitchen. Right. We're we're giving because we need to be givers. Mm-hmm. Yes, those who are receiving might need to receive and will benefit from what we give, but we need to do it primarily because our souls are in danger mm-hmm. of becoming um, docile and overfed and undernourished yeah. with like where God really is at work. And if Jesus really is with the least of these, and we want to be with Jesus, then we have to figure out actual practical ways to be with the least of these. Hmm. Like I said, it can take many forms, uh, and I hesitate to prescribe that for people, uh, because it could be as simple as someone in your family who can't get out of the house, that Hmm. you go and and help to clean their home for them, Mm -hmm. to make sure they get a meal on Christmas Day. It could be, you know, the, the elderly person across the street, you are shoveling their snow for them. Mm-hmm. It could mean lots of things. It doesn't have to be flashy. Mm-hmm. But what we observe during this season should set the tone, I hope, for the way we live the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's really helpful. And I, I really appreciate the emphasis also on, on anonymity and privacy about that. You know, and part of it, part of that really keeps it from being something that uh, you know, if if part of what we're struggling with inside is I need to feel like I'm doing this okay, then one of the ways to get that feeling is to post it, and then then other right. people can tell us that we're doing a good job. And uh, this this uh, takes the center, takes the focus off of us for it. So I really appreciate you highlighting that. Um, yeah, and I agree. I think it's not something we can prescribe for others, but I think that's a helpful helpful yeah. principle for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, last question for me: What carol okay. or song is it that you are looking forward to singing when we get to Christmas? Uh, do you have a favorite carol, a favorite song, or, or well, a couple so, of ways? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So my favorite that I cannot sing <laughs> because uh, it's so hard to sing is "Oh Holy Night." Oh, I yeah. <laughs> cannot. I cannot get through that song without falling. Oh. Um, but I also can't hit the notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not a singer. Right. Um, so I love singing that song. I love hearing others sing that song. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't do a great job of singing along. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, but I'll just tell you the one that I'm enjoying that we're going to start singing next week that people debate, is it Advent? Is it Christmas? Is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it can be both. Sure. Right. Um, I'm very much looking forward to sing that. We, we do that for all four weeks leading up okay. to Christmas mm-hmm. and then afterwards, too. So mm-hmm. those are my faves. Yeah, good, good, good. Well, anything I should have asked you that I didn't? Anything else you want to say? I don't think so. Okay, no. good. Um, what tell people? You were just mentioning your other book to me that you're working on now. So tell other people what are you yeah. what are you working on now, and what can we look forward to from you? Right. Yeah, this week I'm actually turning in the manuscript for my book on a theology of families. Mm-hmm. It's uh, with InterVarsity Press, and the the tentative title so far is Households of Faith. I don't know if it will stay that way. Mm-hmm. That should come out next year. So maybe November of next year. Mm-hmm. And um, that's it for now. Getting the Christmas <laughs> book out was big. And then next year, the family book. Uh, we'll see what happens after that. I'm not sure. Yeah. I should yeah. have mentioned when I introduced you that we met just about a year ago at a University mm-hmm. Press author's retreat. And we had I had such a great time with you getting to know you. And this, yeah. uh, this conversation is just kind of building on it. I just thought if we can get a chance to talk with you and uh, bring those conversations out to light for, for my students, I'd really appreciate it. So I'm yeah, really thankful really for this time together. I really, really am deeply thankful for you and deeply uh, thankful to be connected with you too. I hope that we uh, keep in touch and uh, connect a little more going forward. Yeah, I love that. Thank you.
Emily, thanks for this time. Everybody else, thanks for being with us today. And uh, we will not see you in Around the Table till next semester. So that'll start about three weeks into next semester. So I think it's January 24th will be the next time that we're together. Uh, but I'll see you in chapel before then. So until then, go in peace. Thanks for being with us today. <laughs>